Open Your Eyes is brought to you by the Belize Bank, our country, your bank, and SMART, bringing people together. Good morning and welcome to Open Your Eyes, Start Your Morning Right. I am William Neal and I'm sitting in for Marlene and it's a beautiful Monday morning. It's a bit chilly outside and uh, if you were longing for sweater weather, this might be as good as it gets because um, it's definitely chilly enough for you to give uh, the cockroaches a notice and to do much, much more and enjoy uh, a very cool Monday morning. Of course, over the weekend, I think uh, probably Saturday and Sunday, you had uh, a bit of a chill and you could have languished in bed. But today it's back to work and uh, we're well into our first uh, day of uh, not Christmas week yet, but definitely or run up uh, to uh, Christmas because next week, Tuesday, is when we'll have uh, Christmas Day. And uh, let's get into our uh, chit-chat for today. And of course, I know so many people may have tuned in last night to see Miss Universe. And that was definitely um, a show that uh, people look forward to and uh, Janelle Frazier did her best and represented us well. The inspiring thing about her is the fact that she went through a complete transformation in a very short period of time to go and represent Belize well. Good morning it's Annie. Good morning William, good morning yeah, we're just talking a little bit about the Miss Universe. I don't know if you watch pageants, <laughs> but I know um, quite a number of Belizeans who may not be uh, pageants hopeful mm -hmm. um, or faithful uh, like to watch you know, Miss Universe just to get the glimpses of Belize and see how many times you can record her being on um, camera yeah. and, um, vi and visible. Um, did you get a chance? Unfortunately, I did not. Uh, however, I had been following Janelle's progress um, over the course of the last several days in terms of the various categories that she participated in. Um, like I said, regrettably, I didn't get that opportunity last night to see the overall, <laughs> uh, the main event, as we would say. But um, the idea of this young lady and the, the maturation the maturity mm -hmm. that comes along with um, her journey. Uh, if you've been following Janelle Fraser from, from the very beginning, you would have seen that there's a serious transformation in terms mm -hmm. of her physical appearance, her mind state, uh, the exposure she has gotten. And I think that is commendable. Um, I'll yeah. say for certain, I'm not necessarily one that's big on pageantry, but seeing this, this uh, phenomenal change through this individual. I think it's, it's worth applauding. Well, Miss Philippines ended up walking away with the crown, but mm -hmm. one of the questions that I didn't see the entire pageant, um, yeah. but I saw more than half. Mm -hmm. And the thing um, I liked was uh, there was a question actually talking about pageants and whether they are cake or not, mm -hmm. and um, whether they serve a purpose. And when you look at it, um, you know, for women, um, for some women, it's an opportunity to, to go to school mm -hmm. in terms of academia. Yeah. But you also hear some of the backstories of some of the um, contestants. And I think Miss Thailand, for example, in a country where you know, um, child marriage was, was still um, an issue or is still an issue, um, she chose an education over getting married. Yeah. So for her, when you listen to some of the stories, 
uh, the challenges that women have to overcome. You know, um, a pageant may be archaic in some ways, but it still has a place in the um, world because I think there's a ceiling that a lot of women may have hit and there are a lot of issues that may not be common to us mm -hmm. or familiar to us in Belize that women still have to deal with. Yeah. And I think sometimes it shines a light on those things and you get a window into um, the reality that women face in other places of the world. So for me, um, you know, it's, it's interesting mm -hmm. because uh, it provides a platform for women to speak about issues that, um, you know, maybe a, a, a pretty face yeah. can definitely help get some attention for. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it in a, in a negative or no, no, um, way, but, you know, yeah. but um, I don't know. Pageants, uh, you see a lot of transformation with pageants, whether they're removing the swimsuit and talking more about beauty and um, even the way that they view beauty has been changing within pageants. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, uh, very interesting. But we'd like to say, um, Janelle, uh, we're proud of you yeah. and how you represented our country. And I think a lot of people tune in to see um, how your ambassadorial skills develop. Yeah and uh, you definitely made us proud. So congratulations to you and the entire Miss Belize Universe team who worked tirelessly with you to make sure that uh, you represented us well. Our next uh, feature is to say uh, happy birthday and this comes courtesy of Courts Optical. And it goes to one of Channel 5's <laughs> very own. He call it a novella. Yeah, belated uh, happy birthday. His birthday was yesterday. So we, want, we hope that you had a good birthday yesterday. Nice. And keeping it moving, we're now getting into our weather for today. Good morning, Francisca. Good morning, William. <laughs> <laughs> how are you? I am fine, and how about you? This is sweater weather, so I'm great. <laughs> yes, yes. Let's talk a little bit about how cool it got over the weekend. Okay, um, we recorded 66 six here in, at the airport. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing Belmapan Benke recording the same thing. Um, one place in the Corozal district recorded... Um, Think six to five. Wow. So that's more or less the low temperatures for this morning. And over the weekend, did it go much lower? Because it felt cooler than. No, no, this morning was the coolest. Oh, wow. All right. All right. So, what can we expect for today? Okay, we'll continue to see variably cloudy skies. It will continue cool. We won't be seeing any rainfall. Mm hmm. And the winds will continue from the north and northwest, 10 to 20 knots. Um, far out at sea, beyond the Barrow Reef, it will be higher than that. So mm. we are still going for a small craft caution. Yeah, very often when you pass by the sea, it seems to be a little bit calmer mm -hmm. around yes. this time. Yes. <clears throat> but like I explained, um, beyond the reef and close to the reef, uh, still a little bit rough out there. What happened is, there's something that we call fetch, meaning the wind is coming from a long distance. Okay. And, and it's higher, farther from us, but it's pushing these swells towards us. So okay. the, the high swell still reaches in our area. Hence the reason why we still have to um, issue a, a caution, even though it might seem calmer. Okay, or seem calmer, no? Yes, yes. All right, for our mariners, that's very important. And it's, uh, our winds con uh, speeds? The wind 10 to 20 knots with higher gods, yes, for the Okay. And our temperatures for today, okay. highs and lows? The, the highs for this, for this afternoon, still on the cool side, 78 around the country, except in the Maya Mountains, it will drop to 70. And then overnight temperatures, we'll be seeing 70 along the coast, 66 inland, and 56 up in the Maya Mountains. So, it's slowly warming up and up to, let me see, Thursday it will warm up and still more 
But I'm telling you, by Thursday evening, another cold front will cross us. Wow. So Friday again, it will be cool and windy again. <laughs> so weekends will be perfect for staying in bed. That's right. <laughs> uh, so you've given us our forecast uh, going into uh, tomorrow and towards the end of the week. We want to thank right. you. Any other uh, significant feature that we should be paying attention to? Well, I just want to emphasize that um, people should heed these cautions and warnings that we issue. Mm -hmm. Very, very important because the sea is very deadly. <laughs> yeah, we saw that near miss just a couple of uh, weeks ago. That's right. So, well, thank you very much, Francisca. You're welcome. Have a great day today. Thanks and same to you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. So, so as we look at the weather, um, it's the season as well, so the cold front is <laughs> perfectly much appreciated. Timed. Yes, yes, definitely. <laughs> Unfortunately, today we don't have the um, in your next neck of the woods uh, weather, but uh, we're going to move on to a Monday staple, and that means I on the news. William, I want to focus on a singular incident today that I believe was uh, buried in our newscast on Friday. And this has to do with an incident involving a two-year-old boy, hmm. Tevin Kacho. This incident occurred on Iguana Street Extension on Thursday night, a little bit after 8 o'clock. And... Several things here, just to, just to sort of hmm. preface what I'm about to get into by saying this. Uh, the little boy was run over by a vehicle driven by uh, GSU personnel. Right? The officer has since been identified as uh, Police Constable Marvin McCoy. Accidents do happen, William. We're mm -hmm. not saying no to that. But the two things that I'm looking at is the fact that there may not have been the necessary care and attention being placed to um, driving or navigating this stretch of road where people seem to have been uh, present out on the street. That's one. Uh, secondly, while yes, we understand that the mother left the little boy in the presence of another adult, or that's, that's what she had mentioned in an interview on Friday, the fact that um, you know, anyone would allow a child, especially of that age, to cross the street unattended. Mm. Uh, that says a lot in and of itself. One of the things here, William, is the fact that when we spoke with uh, first responders and eyewitnesses to what transpired on Thursday, one of the individuals who we spoke with pointed out quite flatly that none of the officers attempted to render any aid in terms of trying to free the little boy from beneath the, the wheels of the vehicle so that perhaps the driver of the vehicle may have been in a state of shock. I'm not, I, I wouldn't be able to speak on that to, to explain why he chose not to render any aid. Um, but according to the first responder, he had to take command of the scene in terms of trying to, to see how best that they can dislodge the little boy from beneath the vehicle. And it speaks to whether or not officers are trained to deal with certain situations where uh, they are involved in directly, perhaps in an accident scenario such as this, perhaps in, a, in an instance where perhaps an officer gets shot, or any other uh, unforeseen circumstances that they may encounter how do they respond and and how effective would their response be and i think this is an example of where some form of training in terms of dealing with these kind of crisis situation if i may is necessary again william i go back to the fact that the officers were in the area and they were attempting to disperse a crowd that had gathered in front of the Chinese grocery store, Kim, 
Kim shop too, right? And the idea of it being the time of year, there's a lot of public drinking, there's a lot of socializing and what have you, and we, we know that that kind of gathering or loitering is against the law. But I think, like I said, perhaps the officer driving the vehicle should have been more attentive to, you know, the pedestrian traffic on the street itself. And the fact that the mother, it's difficult. It's a, it's a pretty tough situation. And this child is seriously injured as a result, um, suffering uh, major injuries to the, to, to the head and the face. You know? And so we're monitoring the situation to see what the progress of, of Tevin will be over the next few days. Um, again, like I said, it's, it's, it just so happened that it got kind of buried in the whole idea of the, the Sika summit and the mm -hmm. handing over of the, the presidency on Friday it got sort of swamped in all of that. So it is one of the issues that will be discussed this morning, uh, well, a little bit later today, I should say, in the police press conference. There were several other incidents as well, uh, a shooting incident in Ladyville. There was also a murder down south. Uh, those will be properly uh, ventilated and fleshed out over the course of the day for us to present to you guys, our viewers, at 6.30. You know, it's all, always a little bit worrisome when the eye on the news on Monday focuses more on um, crime news, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But uh, going back to the, the situation with the two-year-old, I mean, it's just, you know, um, whether accidental yeah. or not, um, you know, and... The, uh, which side there's negligence on, mm -hmm. you know, in the end, you know, a child has um, been hurt as a result of this and um, his life uh, just beginning, mm -hmm. um, if he survives, mm -hmm. all of this will never be the same, yeah. you know, and that's a tragedy of a situation like this. You know, um, as we come around um, Christmas, you know, there's increased activity and you know, there's so much more control. It's difficult for policemen, um, you know, regardless of what department or which mm -hmm. part of the department they, um, they fall within to manage um, crowds, yeah. you know, and um, difficult situations. And you raised a, a good point, you know, how do you respond in, in such a situation? And sometimes I think if you don't have the formal training to kick mm -hmm. into the, and rely on that, Sometimes your own personal shock might become mm -hmm. a, a part of your response. You know, yeah. you become um, immobilized by the situation. Um, but definitely a tragedy mm -hmm. and um, something that we'll definitely keep our eyes on. You know, when I heard about it, uh, um, you know, via social media, you know, at first, you know, mm -hmm. it was just something that you were hoping that wasn't so. Yeah. You know, um, and you think about the time of the day and, you know, as you mm -hmm. said, a child crossing the street alone at that point. It's difficult sometimes um, maneuvering or, or streets because of the lighting conditions. Mm -hmm. And um, people, you know, the height of um, the child, you know, um, sometimes the height of the vehicle that you're mm -hmm. in. You know, there are so many contributing factors um, to making visibility very difficult for yeah. adults even when they're not wearing the right uh, color clothing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes I'm driving the highway and you know, it's at the last minute you see someone just yeah. walking on the highway, yeah. you know? So it's difficult, um, not necessarily, um, it's easy to lay blame mm -hmm. on different sides, but at the end of the day, the results are that this child was, um, you know, yeah. impacted negatively uh, at a very uh, critical time when he should be enjoying life, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And um, children are sometimes hard to manage and you have to be very diligent in your care of them as well to yeah. make sure that they don't end up in a situation that could be harmful and shape the rest of their lives. I think one of the, the, the quick points that I want to make here is that there is already this antipathy towards the police department, more specifically the gang suppression unit, so that when these incidents happen and there isn't that kind of critical response. There isn't that, that, that immediate uh, taking control of the scene. It leaves a bitter taste in the mouths of many. And in this particular case, the residents of the, the Iguana Street area do feel that way. Uh, that, that, that tension on Friday morning was 
very palpable in terms mm -hmm. of listening to these people and the anger that the officers did not uh, respond the way they ought to have in that particular instance. So again, it's, it's important for them to receive some kind of training in terms of how to deal with situations such as this. You know, the outrage is, is something that is quite understandable, mm -hmm. you know, that we have to do something. Unfortunately, you know, um, it's the what's next that comes. Yeah. It's how we push um, people in authority to think about this situation and how ugly it is mm -hmm. and how it has impacted a family and a community and to make sure that it doesn't repeat itself, you know? Mm -hmm. So where do you go? How do you actually put something in place to prevent it from happening again? And mm -hmm. that's the key thing to my mind that you don't want this situation, any family or any child, to have to suffer these consequences again. So, you know, that's the main thing. What's next? And I think uh, um, you have to obviously deal with the situation now mm -hmm. and hope for the best, but you should also plan moving into the future. Definitely. All right. Uh, that's our eye on the news. And we're getting ready to move into our show for today. And in our first segment, we're going to be talking about the ICJ and the run-up to, uh, you know, the referendum. Yeah. So that's our first segment. <laughs> and then our second segment, William, is discussing payday loans. All right, so the do's and don'ts of, you know, getting paid in loans, particularly around this time of year. So those are our discussions uh, for this morning going into our show. All right, we're going to go ahead and take our first break. And when we come back, it will be to focus squarely on the ICJ education. Don't go anywhere. Open your eyes. Continues after these messages. your monthly salary with no payment until January 2019. Some conditions apply. The Police Bank, our country, your bank. Smart prepaid and hybrid customers. Let's get on Unlimited. It. Use your prepaid credit to enjoy data plus unlimited calls and SMS. To get your bundles, just call 8654-UNLI to choose from the daily or weekly unlimited package. Daily package gives you unlimited on-net calls and SMS with 200 megabytes of data for only $6. Weekly package gives you unlimited on-net calls and SMS with 750 megabytes of data for only $25. You also get to enjoy 35 cents per minute to the other guys. So go unlimited with Smart. These prices are exclusive of GST.
Christmas is a season when we come together to celebrate as a family. Whether you start your morning right with Open Your Eyes or rush home to catch News 5 Live, or maybe you tune in to sing with KTV or made it a date with the family for Veranda Tales. From our town halls to our live broadcasts and shows like Summerfest, Gimme 5, and From Yes to I Do, it's been our pleasure to be your leading source of news, information, and entertainment. As we mark the close of another year, we are grateful to you for welcoming us into your family and homes every day. From all of us here at Channel 5, may you feel the warmth of the season and be blessed in the new year. Merry Christmas to you, and here's to a prosperous 2019. And welcome back. It's now four minutes after seven, and as promised before the break, we're moving into our segment on the work of the referendum unit in terms of the ICJ education. And joining us for this conversation, we have Ambassador Annie Burns, and we have Ardell Sabido. Good morning, Good morning and ladies. welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Great to be here. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the referendum unit, um, its objectives, and uh, its composition in terms of uh, membership okay. and um, how you've been getting along um, to this point. Okay. Um, Ambassador Alexis Rosado heads the referendum unit and the purpose of the referendum unit is really to share information mm -hmm. to ensure that whether that's by using the ICJ um, Facebook page or the website or going out to um, two people who have interest all across Belize every day um, to give presentations or to take questions is so that people are comfortable with when April 10th, 2019 comes and the date of the referendum is there, that you feel that you are armed with information, whether that is your decision to you feel it should be a no or you feel it should be a yes, that you as, you as a Belizean feel that I'm okay with the information I have to make my decision. And so I, I would like to add that the referendum unit is always open to requests and suggestions. It's really important. We've had an interesting swell of people who want to be involved as volunteers, which we welcome when we talk about composition. But it's important too for people to understand that if something isn't clear to you, don't hold it in reach out where there somebody will respond to you whether that is in a group maybe a community in in some cases we've gone to government office to social security board to btia to the groups um, village council groups we've gone everywhere but we need to do more and 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 increase our activities so the importance of being thank you very much for having us on open your eyes but um, it's important for us to get the message out from a layman's perspective, how do you measure the effectiveness of the information sharing and the awareness campaign? I ask simply because I've seen uh, a couple scenarios where the average person on the street is being asked certain questions in terms of your knowledge of the ICJ, your knowledge of the territorial dispute and what have you. And it seems still a bit overwhelming that a lot of Belizeans don't really understand fully what is the role of the ICJ. They don't understand how this territorial dispute came about in the first place. Right. And so that kind of puts a huge question mark over how they will vote and how meaningful that vote will be to them and to us as a country come April 10th, 2019. Okay. Um, it's very important to understand and to put this into perspective. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of information out there, a lot of information to the point where people say, you know what, I tired of hearing about ICJ. Mm -hmm. I get ready for Christmas. Why should I get, be getting ready for Christmas and still be listening to the ICJ right now, right? Mm -hmm. Bring back the old time Christmas, mm -hmm. right? Uh, boom and chime and all of that thing. But if you really look upon that particular perspective, that's part of our identity. Mm -hmm. That's part of our Belizeanness. Mm -hmm. 
And that's where all of this begins. We are Belizean, we do all of these special things for Christmas or whatever time of the year. Mm -hmm. Because we are Belizeans, we're not Guatemalans. We don't want to be Guatemalans. Mm -hmm. We are not British. We don't want to be British. And that's what got us to independence. That's where the internationalization came in. In the 1960s, when we Libelese went out there, sent with troops out there, right? Just a couple handful of people, and told the world, this is our plight. We have this claim hanging over our heads, but we want to go to independence. And we know it held us back a couple decades in terms of moving to independence, 18, sorry, 1981. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line is that the United Nations and all the countries of the world recognize our right to self-determination, which is our Belizeanness, our uniqueness, mm -hmm. but also our territorial integrity. And let me just put a pin right there, because when you use terminology like that, mm -hmm. or territorial integrity, people feel as if though, you know, I, I don't quite understand that, especially when there's an uh, establishment of an adjacency uh, okay. zone okay. and all of that. Has it been eroded? Is it something that, you know, we should be worried about, you know? Um, you know, it's issues, it's issues like that that I think you know, we don't quite fully understand. And I have one little other aspect to that. For a long time, this entire conversation has been shaped by the experts and um, in academia. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it seemed like a, a kind of, you know, I have to have a certain degree to understand or even be a lawyer. So how do you uh, get people comfortable now to understand that that's not necessarily the case? Okay. Uh, it, it's a really important question and set of questions and observation. And going back to what you asked earlier as well, it's how do you, how do you reach, right? Um, this incredibly important thing So in our history. So we know that, I'm going to preface it by saying we know that in, in 1798 we had the Battle of St. George's Creek. Everybody argue whether it was a battle or not. That is irrelevant. What is relevant about that was that was one of the key points in our Belizean history where we stood up, we moved as a group, as a people, to say that we did not want to be governed by Spain. And, and that is critical. So by the time Guatemala got its independence in, in 1821, Belize had already been, a, been peacefully controlled. This territory, this space that we know as Belize had already been, been peacefully run. By the time we get to the 1859 treaty, which is a boundary treaty, and it's incredibly important for people to get this, right? By the time we sign this boundary treaty between um, Guatemala and British Honduras, what do we have? We have an agreement between both parties stating that they agree about where the boundaries are. Aguas Torres, Garbots Fall, and, and Gracias a Dios. It goes on then after that, 18, by 1861, you had a binational commission that was sent out to actually put in the border points. On the north, it was done with Mexico and Guatemala, and then um, in, in Aguasturbias, and then Garbots Falls by Belize and Gua Guatemala, and then down in Gracias a Dios. What is the significance of that? It is incredibly significant because out of that came a map. And that map actually also clearly in a red solid line shows that in terms of the Sarstoon River, the median point runs underneath south of the Sarstoon Island. This is incredibly important because that Nafui title, that is what we have as ours. So by the time we get to the 1931 exchange of notes, the exchange of notes is relevant because in this exchange of notes, the first paragraph refers to an acknowledgement between British Honduras and the Republic of Guatemala about where those specific boundaries are. So you could say what you want after that. In terms of understanding how international law works and how this is interpreted in the relation to boundary treaties, whether that treaty is in dispute at some point or not, the fact that a boundary was agreed upon in this case more than once, and that those boundary markers were set, means that that has a life of its own. It's like you give birth to a baby, 
and that baby is not you. It has its own identity. And that is incredibly important in terms of Belize's case. Now, moving on from that, in terms of how we get this message out, it's important for people to understand that as early as efforts were made as early as 1937, when the British said to Guatemala, listen, the only way to deal with this is to go to court and to deal with it legally. And the Guatemalans realizing they had a weak, weak case, said, Chaman, we know the panda. No. Again, when the, at that time it would have been the Hague Court. Thereafter, in 1947, the Brits were actually the first to write to the in ICJ at that time and say, we have a dispute. Guatemala is claiming Belize, um, British Honduras, and we would like to send this matter for consideration and determination, which means ending the claim. Mm -hmm. And Guatemala again refused. So the reason that I preface this is for people to understand that this isn't um, a recent thing, that efforts were made even before be we became independent. Mm -hmm. And there was a recognition from way back then that it was imp that, that really the way to deal with this was a legal solution and that we have perfect title to, to, to our territory. Now, in response to your other question about how we share that message, I think having a conversation is important. I mean, what we've done is we have over 100,000 hits this last weekend on the ICJ referendum Facebook page. So people are reaching out. There's an app that we've created that you can get, and that app gives you information offline. So if you know that on internet all the time, you can access that information. We are trying to make the information as accessible as possible and to answer questions so that people can be engaged but also feel comfortable <coughs> asking. How do you do that? How do you know what's working or not? We have to gauge. So when we have presentations, what are the responses of people afterwards? If we are polling, what are we hearing from people? What are we hearing from communities and people in the street? So it's not that we're sitting off in some office up out, out, out there generating nice ideas and, and um, and it, it's, it's actually something that's on the ground and it's organic. So we are responding to what people are saying. And if we're hearing that, your message not to reach me, man. It, it is not something that I resonate with or I have questions about the way you're delivering it. It's too intellectual for me. And I just want to be clear about it. Then we respond by saying, okay, let's have that conversation. How do you want this delivered? delivered. I don't know if that is that, that helps in some way to answer that question. It, it does. It does. Um, I think the feedback and the access uh, and the two-way communication is a key thing because very often people see the, the bodies as something, you know, okay, there's, they're five, you know, kind of a fiefdom kind of um, establishment. So um, no, just how you get the interaction is key. Let me just jump back to the whole territorial integrity because we talk about that as a part of the conversation. What does that mean? That means? That, li that literally means that we are indivisible. You can't cut mm -hmm. it. So when, for example, people say, oh, well, we could lose half a Toledo or we could lose the whole a Toledo. No, that's not possible. That's mm -hmm. literally not possible. And I know they have a lot of noise in the market. Mm -hmm. And fair. And that is why I'm saying there's a lot of information out there. But when you look at it, and what I want Belizeans to know is that this thing about three different questions, and that's what we answer in our presentations. Why? Why allow this to happen now? Simple question, simple question, simple answer. So let's it's start a with proposed, the It's a proposed settlement for end Guatemala's claim against Belize. Done. It's going to referendum because the Constitution, the Referendum Act, says that any time they have a proposed settlement for finish this, Belizeans decide. Mm -hmm. Belizeans are the ones who, ha who have the power, me and you. Mm -hmm. We decide, yes, I want to settle it this way. No, I don't want to settle it this way. Mm -hmm. What is the proposal? The proposal is to use law, mm -hmm. international law specifically, and to take it to the International Court of Justice. What is the International Court of Justice? The legal part of the United Nations. The same United Nations that we have really mm -hmm. sent out our people to do battle, to ask for support, gotten the support. Again, the key words, self-determination 
and territorial integrity. Self-determination, we write for exists as Belizeans. That was accepted, identified, recognized, right? Once you're getting self-determination, independence, you can't take that back. You know, they're no alone. You recognize this by the United Nations, that's it. They believe us, the world believe us. We say we have problems with our neighbor Guatemala claiming our land, please help me. This is how they help. I put my trust, I put my support behind you, Belize. Not only as an individual country, Mexico or Thailand or mm -hmm. whatever country it is, but collectively under the United Nations, under that banner. And all of these things are what are going to be considered by the court. Mm -hmm. So how the court won't decide? Four things the court won't decide. Only four things and only in international law. Treaties. Ambassador Burns went into details in terms of our treaties, mm -hmm. convention, contract, land title, if you will. Not only 1859, not only 1931, then thing not signify just I sign a piece of paper, but literally surveyors from Belize, well, mm -hmm. British at the time, and from Guatemala went out there and marked the points. Draw a line, sign the map drew a map and signed it. Mm -hmm. These things are registered. These things exist. We have original copies. They are in mm -hmm. the archives in London. Those are the number one things that people look at in terms of cases, mm -hmm. in terms of the 15 lawyers that sit on the International Court of Justice. Now, you've also had some conversations back and forth about the validity of uh, some of the treaties, you know, because of the... Um, you know, certain conditions not being met. Can I Is that a factor? Can I respond to that? Um, it goes back to, again, when you, you look at intent. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that the court looks at, um, it, and remember that we are going on a legal basis, not on, 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 on whether we will give any kind of nice consideration to Guatemala, it is strictly. And this wasn't, I, I have to say, that this wasn't an easy decision for either for, for Guatemala to come to. But because we had been to the UN, because we have our friends and group of friends at the OAS, because we have gone out to the non-aligned movement seeking support for Belize's cut and receiving it, have, because we have the strength of the 53 countries in the Commonwealth and always of CARICOM behind us, and recently as well, they not recently, but consistently, the group of African, Caribbean, and Pacific states, they all politically recognize our position. Legally, in terms of some of the questions that people raised, for example, in the 1931 exchange of notes, where there's a reference to a cart road, the intent, the documentation is there, it's archived, the information is available. This isn't anything that is hidden or obscured. The intention of that cart road was never session. It was never the intention of that cart road states specifically that it was to encourage agriculture and trade between both areas, right? So whether that, that was continued or ratified or not is irrelevant. Why? Because before that, we have the boundaries demarcated yeah. We have a map where they actually went out and signed an agreement on both sides repeatedly. So that is really what is held. The, 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 the treaties are not predicated. Their existence is not predicated upon a clause with a cart road, where the intention of the cart road was actually to enhance trade and agriculture. And I mean, quite frankly, the one trade agreement that we have now um, bilaterally is with Guatemala because there is an understanding that as neighbors we have to we have to get on. Yeah. yeah. But we know that Guatemala, after all of these years of pursuing, um, and Ardell can go, can go into the different because it, the the UN also says to us we recognize mm -hmm. you, but we also recognize that you must try a number of different ways to resolve this dispute. And if you reach a point where you can no longer agree to negotiate, where negotiations end, then you must go to court. And so we can talk about that a little bit later. Mm -hmm. Do we believe but that we are at that point where we have exhausted all 
other options in an attempt to resolve this I, dispute? I think, I think we have it on the slide, on the PowerPoint, if you can bring it up. It's just literally Article 33 of mm -hmm. the Charter of the United Nations, and it has a list, I think seven or eight different things, mm -hmm. that are recommended by the United Nations for literally when countries have problems with one another. This is what you should use first mm -hmm. when you have problems with another country, and then it has negotiation, conciliation, mediation, facilitation, all the Asians. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and basically, um, all of them are different fancy ways for saying sit down and talk to one another, mm -hmm. negotiate essentially, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we brought a lovely PowerPoint presentation of the different, the different rounds of negotiation and mediation and facilitation that Belize has tried over the past, what, 40 years, pretty Five much? Days, yeah. yeah, 40 years. Um, and the only two on the list that Belize hasn't tried so far are arbitration and judicial settlement, mm -hmm. which both literally mean using the law, going to court, mm -hmm. right? Um, so just if I can jump back very sure, quickly about sure. the cart road, mm -hmm. um, because it's very important. This 1859 treaty is rejected by Guatemala, and I think we all grew up to hear this null and void, right? Mm -hmm. If we don't remember nothing else, remember null and void. Mm -hmm. Why? Because Article 7. Article 7, the Guatemalans say this, is, this whole contract was supposed to be a treaty of session. This land I'm for me, I tell you I won't give you this because you have to give me a cart road. You never give me a cart road, so I won't tear this up. No, this is no good. That's not what international law says. Literally, that's not what international law says, and that's why Belize has kept saying over and over again, we have a very strong case. Because nothing in this document, how the court would have interpreted it, not how me and you read it, or how domestic lawyers read it. Mm -hmm. What the Vienna Convention on Interpretation of Treaties say? They only could read what actually the on the paper. I just want to jump in and say something there, because one of the things that also um, comes as a result of that conversation is that some people say, well, this was an uh, issue with England, or, you know, or Britain, and you know, Guatemala. It has nothing to do with, with us, per se. And you had this name change from the Anglo-Guatemalan dispute and all of that, because that confuses people and it shows that Belize as an entity, you know, this was an agreement between Britain and Guatemala. So how do you deal with that um, concern? Uh, we can't magically whisk it away. Mm -hmm. um, and we can't be, it would be negligent of us and, and, and really impossible of us having come to independence. <laughs> whenever, and again, I, I think it's we a have shame a, that a we don't have this video slide. of the actual independence. But, but independence in that night. moment, that we inherited that claim and it is our responsibility to see that true. A, a, we can't go back in time and say, oh, we choose not to take that on. Mm -hmm. That was a condition that that is the reality. Um, and to say anything other than that is to, is, is to misconstrue and misinform. The reality is we've got the problematic baby and we have to deal with it. Canberra, we had in Addison. Yeah. We have a video? We have a little video of independence, yeah. Just highlighting the fact, because it comes up over and over again. We'll make the British deal with mm -hmm. it. Well, mm -hmm. the, the reality is that the United Kingdom is in Europe and we are in Central America mm -hmm. sharing our border with Guatemala, and right? we're living it. Mm -hmm. We're the ones that are here. How, and to, to piggyback on what William was mentioning earlier, the whole idea of the Anglo-Guatemalan dispute now transforming to the Belize-Guatemala territorial dispute. Um, any aid from the United Kingdom in terms of either um, legal, technical expertise in understanding the entire issue, uh, anything from them, any assurances of any sort? It's in Go ahead, if you Well, uh, uh, maybe you can pick up from me, but I mm -hmm. think it's important um, to understand that over the years we had um, people say, well, what happened? Oops. A little excitement. <laughs> <laughs> Monday morning, Monday morning. It's okay. Keep us all a week. <laughs> but so 
people say, so, so, so what has actually been done in all of this period? And we talk about 40 years and even going back 56 years in terms of, of, of this whole process. And so what have the Brits done? Mm -hmm. And um, they have provided and continue to provide um, some assistance. We would, of course, always like more. They have been involved. Um, but, oh dear, but ultimately this is, this is, this is our, um, we have inherited this dispute. It will not go away under Guatemala's constitution. And so we, not only to the British, but we reach out to many countries. That is why we get all of that international support as group of yeah. friends to say, we have had the assistance of um, the legal opinion, which you may have all seen. That is, is part of the bedrock upon which our case is built. And it is an incredibly strong opinion made up um, and, and produced by Sir Elihu Lauterpak, who was a leader in his field and who um, was always incredibly committed to the case of Belize and absolutely sure that we could win it. In fact, one of the things he said to, to um, the late Fred Martinez and myself, just before he died, we were able to see him and we were getting information and, and gathering documents. And he said, you know, one of the things that I regret the most is that I am absolutely sure of Belize's case, but I regret that I feel I will not li live long enough to, s to see it come to a proper ending and to see Belize win this case. And um, Judge Schwebel, who also was a participant in, 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 the, in, the, in writing the legal opinion, mm -hmm. actually was the president of the International Court of Justice. We have some of the finest legal minds available to us. And it is not purely transactional for these individuals. They became involved in this. And the introduction to Sir Ellie came through the, the, the British government. Um, they um, continue to assist along with the EU and many other states to assist, for example, with this uh, public awareness campaign mm -hmm. to try to ensure through the auspices, through the office of the UNDP. So just to clarify, people, I've, I've heard people saying, well, so much money has come into, directly into government of Belize, that's not the case. It's gone to UNDP, who agrees and administers what, what activities, the same activities of outreach and what we can do, ensuring that we're on all of the shows, ensuring there are radio shows, ensuring there's engagement with young people who are of a voting mm -hmm. age, who may not have all of that history behind them. But trying to, like you say, when you, yeah. when you go on the street and talk to people, to try to reach out so, so that there's a better uh, understanding all the way across the board. So there, Going there has to districts yes. as well, mm -hmm. and there has been involvement and people at times um, in in relation to, to British efforts. Um, we we have the reality of the Webster proposal, so that was an attempt as well at mediation, where it has not been helpful to Belize. But we as a sovereign nation, we as a sovereign people, we as as Belizeans who knew where we wanted to go, said mm -hmm. we're not standing for it. So you can propose and you can try to be helpful, but if we see that it, that is something that is not in our favor, we will stand up. We're going to go ahead and take a quick break and uh, we'll continue with our conversation after this. But that's a very good point to um, perhaps uh, raise again after the break, uh, the Webster proposal and um, you know things that people feel may not have been in the best interest of Belize. Um, in the settlement of this dispute. We're going to go ahead and take a break and when we come back, there's more on the ICJ and your referendum.
Remember, you can borrow up to five times your monthly salary with no payment until January 2019. Some conditions apply. The Police Bank, our country, your bank. But Ma, the lady said on the radio and television that if you have not re-registered, you can still go to the election and boundary registration office to register. I also heard her say that if you're not registered, you can't vote in any election or referendum. Ma, let's go! So that you can register and vote in any election or referendum. Ma, look and listen. Requirements for registration. Remember, persons who are 18 years of age or over is a citizen of Belize, a citizen of any Commonwealth country who has ordinarily resided in Belize for 12 consecutive months and resident in the electoral division for not less than two months qualify to register. You have a civic responsibility to register and vote. Register today. Your right to vote depends on it. A message from the Elections and Boundaries Department. Need a postplane number and broadband internet service for your home or office? Then you're in luck! Sign up for Smart's broadband and mobile postpaid combo and save big with Smart's new combo plans promotion. Enjoy up to 20% off your mobile postpaid plan. And there's more, you get double the data on your mobile plan for the next three months. When you sign up with Smart, you'll enjoy huge savings and free data with our combo plans promotion. Smart, bringing people together. And welcome back. We're still here with our conversation on our run-up to the ICJ and the referendum. And we're still with members of the referendum unit. We have Ambassador Annie Burns and Ardell Sabido. And uh, right before the break, we were talking a little bit about the Webster proposal and uh, that that had, in fact, been rejected. Um, that's a part of the discomfort for some people. Um, you know, how do you look at this proposal now and say if it's valid or not? I, I think actually I would switch it around and say that we shouldn't be uncomfortable with that. We should be extremely comfortable with that because it means that you weren't put over a, a, a barrel. That If you had a proposal that you feel is unacceptable, it was okay to reject it. Guat Guatemala has similarly re rejected proposals. They rejected the, the, the UK wanting to go directly to ICJ. Mm -hmm. um, and we similarly, when we received those proposals, they were unacceptable to us. And we said, no, that's not something we'll consider. That is why that Belize in this question has insisted on 38.1 in terms of going strictly on the basis of international on law. Um, and so in, in negotiations, you, you will hold on to the position that is most dear to you. And in, in that case, why would we sacrifice something that is, um, that actually, that backs us? Mm -hmm. So there is no way that we would sacrifice that. Um, the, the, the pressure of the international community is under the same UN, is to find a resolution. If you have gone through all of these steps, and none of the negotiations are working and you are at an impasse, then the only way is, is really to go to court. And there is some discussion. There are two things I'd like to, to reference. There is some discussion about seeking, another, seeking an advisory opinion. Mm -hmm. The danger of an advisory opinion or the, or the difficulty with it is it's a time-taking process. And ultimately, you can get political support but it doesn't resolve anything. So Can you, you explain for us, mm -hmm. I, I hate to, to interject no, here. Please. Can you explain for us what the advisory, so, that process is and what it entails? So an advisory um, um, okay. opinion, opinion okay. would have to come through one of the UN arms. So it's a, can, a country 
directly ask for one. You have to gather support from within the UN, and then it goes through a UN body, and the request is made for an advisory opinion. Mm -hmm. But in the case of, for example, Morocco and the Western Sahara, the people of the Sahawari people, they got an advisory opinion that Morocco was supposed to respect their sovereignty. But what Morocco has done is taken over 80, over 80 percent of their territory. And similarly with the Palestinians, what they sought was an advisory opinion. Mm -hmm. But the advisory opinion, though it may have the, the, it may have the information stating, it, the allowing countries to say, we completely support that this is a right decision. It doesn't resolve anything. Mm -hmm. And this is the, 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 the danger we have having come through this entire process of co all of the Asians, as, as Ardell says, getting to a point where we circle back and we go for an advisory opinion. And the likelihood is that the opinion will still indicate that the only solution is to go to court. So we kick the ball down, we kick the can down the road, and we do a disservice to our people because we have an opportunity, having gone through this entire process, to find a resolution. And what is incredibly important uh, for people to understand, I think that there is a lot of misunderstanding about what the referendum how it came about, what it is, what it means. It's important for people to understand that not all countries give their people the say. We are in a position where Belizeans have more power than we think. We have the power mm -hmm. to take the decision, to go and register and take the decision, whether that is no or yes, and vote on it. There are many countries who just take this issue straight to, to court and the people are never consulted. And so some of the things that we see as concerning mm -hmm. are actually things that give us power. We're not seeing it in that vein. We're not realizing that that is my opportunity. Mm -hmm. The issue of the territorial dispute, which as Ardell says, looms over our heads, kind of reminds me of the analogy of the Sword of Damocles. In this particular case, if a majority of Belizeans come April 10th next year decide that we are not going to the ICG, what happens next? Because I know that the claim still remains, mm -hmm. it, it continues to hang over our heads. Mm -hmm. But what's, what's to happen either from a diplomatic perspective or from any other points of view? Um, well, what people say is, you'll hear people saying, well, it's the status quo. Mm -hmm. And my question, my question is, so if we vote no, what is the status quo? What does that mean? Mm. We know, um, and, and you need to be careful because we need to prevent, present information, but we don't want it to be emotional. We don't want to instill fear. Mm -hmm. But what is our reality? Our reality is that we have a situation where a border dispute as much as for Guatemala as for us, prevents them from participating in certain areas of the UN that they would like to. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily in their favor to keep this thing going on either. But more than that, we have our experience in the Chiki Bowl, which is an incredibly important, it is important not only to Belize, but also in terms of watershed to Guatemala. Mm -hmm. But what have we seen over the years that what began as people coming in and illegally harvesting chate became illegally harvesting logs, um, wood, precious wood, became then morphed into people gold panning, using mercury to do that, which is incredibly detrimental to all of our health. Um, and then what do we have after that? Then it morphed into something else. You have people coming and you see the, um, we, we have, have a slide. We now. Eggs. We also have poaching as well. And it's critical that we understand that. Why? Because when you have, when you look at Belize and you look at Guatemala, mm -hmm. over the years, it's like a, a fan. So you can see that that territory is, that land is being cleared. Mm -hmm. Look at the difference between 1975 and 2007. Mm -hmm. Look at how much of our territory is being cleared. Mm -hmm. And what that means is that it, it started as one thing, but it keeps morphing into something else. And by the time you have people coming into Claire, 
for cattle ranching or for drug farming. Mm -hmm. it, it, it brings in an element, a criminal organized crime element that I am not sure if, if that is something that we have to watch very carefully. And so with the resources that we have, we have to think also when we think in terms of this claim that the status quo isn't something that's static. It's not something yeah. where I stand still that, oh, we're in Guatemala, we're Guatemala, it's okay, it's we don't have a static. problem right now. Mm -hmm. But over time, this has slowly, slowly been eroding and changing. And so we really need to think carefully about, no, we're not going to have an invasion overnight if people vote no. That is not going to be the reality. Um, but the reality is that we, that, that we are under threat every day. And it's not a threat that should make people fear, but it should make you concerned because those are, those are our pristine resources. And those resources, we depend on that in terms of tourism to even support the, 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 the aquaculture and the, and the ecology of the reefs. It is all interlinked, so it's all important. I think part of the part of the the situation here, from my humble point of view, perhaps there are many Belizeans who don't have an appreciation for what this particular situation is on the ground. Uh, I've had an opportunity to to fly over the area of the western border, and when you look at how much land has been denuded on the Guatemalan yeah. side, and you look at the rich forestry on our side. It's night and day. But that's because I have had that opportunity to clearly understand from being from an aerial perspective and being on the ground in a chicky bull, for instance. But not too many people get that opportunity. So the whole idea of the dispute and how serious it is seems distant to them. It's like, okay, well, it doesn't necessarily affect me. You'd have to actually be there to see how. When you start talking about diplomacy, people's mm -hmm. eyes kind of glaze over and they start to... And these are, these are the conversations, these are things that have been in the news for decades, mm -hmm. right? So when we talk about all of these different rungs of negotiation and all of these things, people don't necessarily always pay attention. Mm -hmm. But this is what the government, successive governments have been trying to do, is deal with these things. And when you see the chicky bull, for example, mm -hmm. then it hits home. It says, this is what we've been working for. This mm -hmm. is why we need to end the claim, because this is the reality every day, not only when you guys go to the, to the chicky mm -hmm. bull and put the footage and then people feel bad when they see the leap are at there, but that's something where we have to deal with as our people every day and we have to drink the water we come out of the chicky bull mm -hmm. every day. So in terms of the wrongs and negotiations, we can talk and talk and talk. I agree when I hear some people saying, well, we, 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 not ha we not try everything yet. We could talk and, you know, talks never break down. But when you have one side saying, what I want is land, mm -hmm. and we will never give them land. So yes, I agree, we could talk for now till no more, no more. Or the government might change in Guatemala and we might get somebody very nice, mm -hmm. and they might just drop the claim and take it out of the constitution. Well, the last person that tried to do that was President Serrano in 1991. And he said, you know, I mean, we have footage of him saying all kinds of things like, listen, we sit down with them at Sika, we sit down at the table with Belize, mm -hmm. we sit with them in the United Nations, in the OAS, this is a reality that we have to face. They are a country and, and this claim doesn't make no sense. Mm -hmm. But to take it out of the constitution is a legal action. And no politician will go and have wrongs of talks with their people and explain to them no after so many years of saying Belize es nuestro, mm -hmm. come and just take it out of the constitution very nicely and everybody and say, yes, we agree. President yeah. Serrano tried to do it and we know the history of that, no? He's mm -hmm. in exile in Panama, isn't he? And there have been um, efforts, I mean, with successive presidents and foreign ministers of Guatemala, mm -hmm. including we have the clip that is often used of, of a very able foreign minister, Gert Rosenthal, essentially saying the same thing, that it is not an easy thing to go back and change the Constitution. Mm -hmm. And essentially, <coughs> this allows them an out as well, and it allows everyone to move on. Um, so it, it, it's, it's critical that, that people understand that um, 
the the efforts continue you know on a on a day-to-day -day basis we are in touch with them mm -hmm. trying working quietly but in terms of the end goal the end game for a uh, guatemala is that they want land and our position is that we have title we have sovereignty we have territorial integrity and we're not going to give it up and we know that we have the foundation behind us that is solid. And on that bedrock, we know we have a case. That because we have to think as well, a, we can't think in five-year terms. When you're thinking about, about the good of your country and having gone through all of these efforts over, over <coughs> so many years, and here you see the, 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 the Chate, you you can't you you cannot just uh, say well uh, we'll leave it mm -hmm. because we depend on tourism very heavily and we have to consider that as you have said in your own experience in your you've taken sight of it that one year it might be like this five years down the road it 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 has an effect ten years down the road. So how long will we wait? On, do we wait until we know that Guatemala's rivers are, are very heavily polluted? We know that the practice is there. We see it with our fisher folk. Our fisher folk complain that we try to impose rules that will preserve the fishing that they do and ensure that they have stock in future years. And yet the Guatemalans have different practices. So we, we need that that backing behind us, that, that, that legal end to the claim to say you must respect us and you must stop, you must desist. Let me go back to one thing because it's 10 years since the uh, special agreement or the compromis um, and <coughs> still the question, let's, let's deal with the question itself, the semantics of the question. Mm -hmm and um, what it really um, says and what it really means. So the people don't like the semantics and people don't like to talk about why I said this because any and all and these kinds of things. And I think we have it here. It's Article 2, the question that is going to be um, put to the court if Belizeans decide to, um, to vote yes next year. And it simply says, and we can go through it if you think, uh, sure. It's effective. It says the parties, which parties, Belize and Guatemala, request the court, because this is a voluntary mm -hmm. thing, you have to ask the court, mm -hmm. um, to determine in accordance with applicable rules of international law. So it's yeah. not telling you they're going to redraw the border. Mm -hmm. Determine in accordance with applicable rules of international law. But international law is wide. So it specifies Article 38.1, and that's where it comes back to the four things that the court mm -hmm. is going to use to evaluate the case. Mm -hmm. So it's not telling you, I am giving the court free reign, blank check, mm -hmm. to redraw the borders. We know where our borders are, but this is going to be done in accordance with law. What does international law say? Ambassador Burns referred to it already. We have a border defined in 1859, again, in 1931, that is what we're asking the court. According to this, please tell Guatemala what part of border they. That a way boiled down to. But it's in all of this nice legal jargon because we're dealing with an international court, right? Any and all legal claims of Guatemala against Belize because we know it's Guatemala claiming against Belize. And why we say any and all legal claim? Number one, legal claims. So dealing with law, not because we say it's a legitimate claim or because we believe Guatemala. Unfounded is not the opposite of legal. Legal yeah. no mean legitimate. And it says any and all, because you know what? Over the years, I'm sure that all of us remember various different times when there have been a host of different, first I only want one piece of this, so then I want Sapo de la Keys, then I want Rangwana Key. Yeah. Now we see one map on Facebook, we have a big red line, cut off Belize at the waist, everything down from Belmopan, right? So these things keep changing. But if you put it together with legal, 
I could come and claim and say, you know what, I like Cedar Christmas tree, that Christmas tree that for me. But if I go to court, how am I going to support that? Mm -hmm. I don't have a legal claim. I don't have any evidence to prove it. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's together there. And relating to anything, land, insular territories, and any maritime areas, land, islands, seas, mm -hmm. pertaining to these territories. And it's important to see right there, to declare the rights therein of both parties. For say what the for who and who the for what. Mm -hmm. And to determine the boundaries between their respective territories and areas. Remember what Guatemala has in their constitution is that they don't have no border between two of we. Because they reject this 1859 treaty. We draw the border. So anytime you say one map, all of us go across to Guatemala. Mm -hmm. And they include Belize like for their missing district. <laughs> right? Yeah. District 23, then call we something like that. Mm -hmm. That is exactly why it's like that. And we can argue over the semantics. And I know they tell you you have to have one law degree for understand this thing. But the lawyers put this together, international lawyers. And every word there has a significance. Mm -hmm. But to the court, because that are the question we're going to the court, that enough for make me and you decide, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's structured like that because you got legal advice on how best to support Belize's case. Nobody with, else wants. With every single word. Let's, while we're talking about the legal um, jargon there and the courts, mm -hmm. you know, some people take it from a, a, a national kind of thing. Well, you, you know, you, you can't control the, mm -hmm. what are happening in the court, you know, tenure, this, that, all kinds of um, concerns about the, uh, Validity, not uh, integrity of the um, ICJ, you know, that they may be controlled by greater forces. Some people say things like, you know, um, well, it's clear that the U.S. does not necessarily support, you know, um, Belize because they are always backing Guatemala for this, for that, etc. So how do you deal with that um, concern that people may have? Well, quite frankly, with facts. Um, I think right now one of your colleagues are in The Hague on one of these trips and learning mm -hmm. all of these things. Fifteen judges on the court, right, from all over the world, and I wish we had the picture, but that's a different slideshow. Mm -hmm. And the bottom line is that, number one, people say, well, we don't know what the court is going to say because it's a gamble and it's like bolido, it's like going to the casino. Mm -hmm. I don't want to play bolido like that because we know exactly what the court is going to say. We have the records from the court start. And we've studied these cases, and not me and Ambassador Burns or, or anybody individually from the referendum unit. The lawyers that wrote the legal opinion studied these cases for something like 30 years, putting together our legal opinion. And the, the issues come up over and over again in terms of territorial disputes. Because countries have a lot of problems with one another, right? Mm -hmm. But specifically on territorial disputes, 33 cases. And a lot of them are very, very similar, and that's why you know, hear people refer to a lot of different countries uh, in Asia, in Africa, all over Latin America. But the bottom line is that the four things that the court look at, treaties, custom, principles of international law, the last one is past cases. And they always have to refer to their past cases. And these things that, for example, Ambassador Burns referred to, once a boundary, once a treaty is set, it takes on a life of its own. That's not only a principle, that comes from case law. And we see over and over again from the 70s, the 60s, the 90s, 2001, 2002, 2003, the same cases, the same issues come up and the court always applies the law that they made and they refer to their past cases. They can't run away from that. Yeah. So you can't make up nothing. They make a decision, they have to explain it, they have to write it out. They have to tell you exactly why and they have to tell you what part they get the law from. Mm -hmm. Now, you have um, been supplying um, reading material and I want to get to that because we're, we're um, in the final minutes of the conversation. Where can people get the information um, easily, you know, and um, for example, the pocket guide to the referendum. Why is this a must read for every Belizean um, prior to, you know, deciding? Okay, well, that leads, it was written before Guatemala um, took their side to referendum. 
But that is important because nothing in, in, in there has changed. But what it does is it condenses mm -hmm. this big, heavy history that we have from before 1859 right down, and it condenses it, but highlighting all of the key points. This is available for free, it's available online, and it's available at the referendum unit. We hand it uh, out in presentations. We hand it out in all presentations. And some businesses in different towns, San Ignacio, mm -hmm. Bamapan, Belize City, in the districts when we go and do presentations. I think um, there's, the still a also yeah, there's still a supply at Central Drugstore and Albert Street. I think that's the most mm -hmm. central <laughs> place you could just go and yeah. pick it up there. Yeah, we try to keep everywhere stocked up. And then there is the, um, we mentioned the ICJ referendum Facebook page. Um, which has been getting a lot of activity and hits, which is important. We know that a lot of Belizean men and women, of uh, particularly of a certain age, are visiting the page and getting information. You have the ICJ app, mm -hmm. and you have uh, a, 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 an official web website. 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 Um, so the app is called Be Informed, mm -hmm. and you can download all of these things. But as you can see, there's a lot of, um, well, apparently pictures of me, um, <laughs> presentations that we do, but also links to videos and other information that we have. And you can also download all of the legal opinions. You could get this, which gives you a concise little package of it, but mm -hmm. also answers simple, very simple questions. What happened if we vote no? What happened if we vote yes? Yeah. And if you want to read the whole legal opinion, that's available on the website as well and on the app. Be informed. That's what the app is called. The main thrust of um, the referendum unit, what would you say that is? Information, information, information. <laughs> Essentially, what we want to do is ensure all of us that are empowered, all of us that have this opportunity to decide which way. We have key dates. The Battle of St. George's Key, the 1859 Treaty, going to independence. And when you, when you and I look back, this, this 10th of April 2019 will be one of those key dates in terms of deciding what road our country takes. We, have, we are lucky enough to be able to participate in that process. And so our role, some of us have been brought in from our respective posts. In, I, I, I'm based in Cuba, but I've been brought into Belize. Other ambassadors will be coming who have been a, product, a part of this process, like uh, Dylan Vernon um, and, and High Commissioner Perdomo and many others to assist at various times because either they have been a part of the process, all of us had at, at any point have been a part of lobbying Belize's case. And so it is important for us to share our knowledge, but also to mock in and to make sure we help um, to ensure that people have the information that they need to take a decision. The, this, um, you started off um, our conversation this morning um, <clears throat> talking a, a, a bit about um, how important it is that Belizeans engage fully. Um, some people feel as if though, you know, and I have to raise this point about whether the information is balanced. Is it balanced? I think it's extremely balanced because I think if the position were that we were going out to, to at this time, if, if, if I today was here to try to get you to vote yes, mm -hmm. my message would have been different. But as a public officer at this time, I am tasked to share this information. This is just the facts. Yeah. It, just because you don't like what you're hearing doesn't mean that it's that I'm advocating for a yes. Mm -hmm. the, the reality is, and that may not be the case, but I, I, I understand that that is the position of some people that they feel that because the referendum unit is out sending out this information that, that we're trying to force you to say yes. Essentially, what we're trying to do is say, listen, we have a unique opportunity to have a say in something really important to our country. And this is the information you need. And if you don't like the way you're getting it, then we will break it down in a different way, or we will present it in a different way, or we want to talk to you in a different way. But it is important 
that you use this because this will affect the lives of not only us as we grow older, mm -hmm. but our children. And so it is the, the work of the referendum unit is to try to transmit that information and to res be responsive enough that when we see that it's better to have a, 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 a talk show or to go out um, and have uh, trivia discussions and to go out um, on, one on, on a one-on-one -on -one basis into communities, we do whatever is needed and we respond to what we are hearing because this is so critical. Ardell said something earlier in the show as well, at the very top almost, where we're talking about the engagement. <coughs> and usually, you know, at this point, we'd be totally in Christmas mode. What happens now in terms of the work of the unit to keep people engaged and not to lose interest? Well, um, you know, that we are not only participating in these morning shows, but we're also participating in all of the different Christmas activity. So we not only have floats, but we have trivia quizzes. This weekend. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, 12 Days of Christmas on Love FM. There's gonna be a national security Christmas as well on Saturday, uh, where Love FM is surprising some, um, some of our, our um, service people mm -hmm. that are all yeah, over the- Surprising anymore. I know, that's what I, the same thing I'm thinking. Um, <laughs> Going out there and showing Belizeans what our troops go through when they're stationed mm -hmm. all over That's the place and, and the dedication that they have to our country. Um, so all of this information, all of these facts, you can pick up all of these things, brush up on your dates because the trivia quizzes and questions are coming and we're giving away little prizes, little incentives so that people um, can get in the spirit and celebrate Christmas as well. So the two don't go like chalk and cheese, but they actually do fit together. Have an ICJ referendum <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> well, ladies, we want to thank you very much for joining us this morning. And we do encourage people to uh, engage the referendum unit, get the information. And um, if they have questions, uh, seek. Uh, send us a, send us a mm -hmm. question on our Facebook mm -hmm. page. We answer it. I think the turnaround time is less than about half an hour. Well, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank, thank you for, you for having, having us. us. Right. We're going to go ahead and take a break. And when we come back, it'll be to look at payday loans, the do's and the don'ts. Don't go anywhere. Open your eyes. Continues after these messages.